Hey now, today I'm going to try to repair this hole in this wall from the door that got uh, hit into it and of course the little stopper was uh, out of place because I've got children and I guess they like to mess around with things. So this is uh, right at doorknob height, so I'm actually down on my knees right now. Um, and it is the size of a doorknob. Now I'm going to try to do that using a trick that I uh, have done before repairing hollow doors that um, got holes knocked in them. And that's just using some spray foam insulation here and some spackling and just a couple of tools. So let's take a look at how this works. So step one here is I've just kind of pushed aside any parts of that drywall that's hanging out uh, right near the edge. And then just using a utility knife here, I'm going to cut a little bit. Essentially, you want to sort of bevel it in just a little bit here because that's going to make things easier down the road. So I'm just trying to create sort of like a 45 degree angle or so coming around here. The paint makes it a little bit awkward, more so than I saw with that door that I was working with, but that's okay. all the way around and do that. Okay, there we go. So I've got that all kind of beveled off now. So time for the next step. So the next step is to use this spray foam. Now, unfortunately, this is the second time I've used this. It's, it's been a little while, and so it's not going to flow out quite as nicely as it might otherwise. However, I'm gonna go ahead and fight with it and make it work one way or another. Now, this is a really deep wall. This wall here is actually um, a good six inches before the back. So I'm gonna do what I can to actually adhere some of this stuff to the drywall that's punched in here because I can't quite reach all the way to the back. If this was a, sh a shallower wall, then I would easily just be able to reach the drywall on the other side and go from there. But as it is, we will see how this works. And the whole idea with this is just to give a bit of a backing onto which we can place the, the uh, spackling compound. All right, that was way more of a hassle than it should have been, but again, it's because I was reusing this, uh, this can here. So now I'm just going to let it do its thing and harden, and then we'll come back. So after a couple of hours here, you can see that this has hardened quite a bit. It's also poofed out considerably from where it was. It's out at least an inch and a half here in the middle. Now, the trick is to try to slice this off. Now, if you're doing this on a door, which is the only thing I've done this on before, um, it's easier because you usually you're close enough to an edge that you can run either a utility blade or um, a long knife of some sort along it. Now I'm limited because this is in the middle of a large flat wall. So I'm actually going to wind up using this really long, skinny, flexible blade that I've got here because I can try to get along flat to the wall, which is the key because you're trying to come along nice and flat and cut it off as flush to the wall as possible. Oh, now having done that, it's still a little soft in the middle. So I'm going to just leave this here for a little bit. I'm probably not going to muck around with this. I do want to cut a little bit closer to the wall here um, on this underside, but I'm going to let this stuff here just harden a little bit more and then I can carry on. So after another couple of hours, you can see that this kind of puffed out here again. So I'm just going to give this another little slice, see what happens. So just a little soft there in the middle. Just trim a bit of this off here. I think I'm going to keep leaving this. I might actually just leave this overnight as it's I got a late start at this here. And then tomorrow I can go ahead and um, keep moving forward with this. And that way I'll know it'll be totally, totally solid in the middle there. All right, so it is the next day. 
And now I'm just going to slide across here with this knife and try to make sure that it is flush or even slightly inset um, if need be. Uh, it's better to have it too far in than too far out because there's no way to deal with it if it's uh, sticking out past. So like this, uh, this foam here that's built up a little bit around the edges, I am going to try to just shave that off. Um, it could also likely just be sanded, um, and I will be, will be sanding this of course, but since I've got the blade out, that's what I'm going to use right now. Just working my way around. So I'm just using this here and I can kind of tell where it's sticking out just a little bit. It's a little poofy right there. Let me just try to cut some of that out just to make sure that it doesn't mess up the finished, finished job here. Okay, so I've got basically all of that. So now I'm just going to go ahead and grab um, some sand, some uh, a sander. And we'll see if that helps things out just a little bit more. Okay, so now I've got a well-loved uh, wall sanding block here. I'm just going to go ahead and sand this, making sure that I've got no foam around this perimeter. There's still just a little bit around here. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a nice sanding. So now I did find that in uh, running this across here, I'm I can hear a little bit of friction right on here. So it's probably flush, but there's a chance it might be just slightly higher. So I'm going to focus on sanding some of this. It's actually kind of this little mid circle here. And the trick here too is to wear a mask just so you're not breathing in this dust because it's not good for you. If I'd been a little bit more on the ball, I probably would have had my vacuum here and just also sucked this up as I was going. So I might actually go snag that now too. All right, so now I've got my vacuum here. I'm gonna leave it down here and catch, catch any of the uh, dust coming off. Okay, so I'm going to test again here. So just in here maybe, there might be a little bit more to deal with. Okay. And okay, I'm not hearing any pulling. Oh, maybe just a little bit there. I'd rather front load this work rather than try to deal with it once I've got putty on there because it would just be a nightmare. Wait for that to quiet down and... Perfect. Not hearing anything there. Okay, so now I'm just going to vacuum a little bit more. Get any of this dust out of here. Then I'll give it a quick wipe down with a uh, with the paper towel, another little quick vacuum, and then we are ready to patch. All right, so now I'm just opening up my little container of spackling here. Beautiful. And I actually went ahead and cleaned off this freaking putty knife. I don't know who had used it last. I take no blame for that. Now, I'm just going to do 
a light one here. I'm not leaving a whole lot of excess. Sort of like a preliminary little job. Try and get rid of any of the little divots in there, air pockets, what have you. Yeah, there's still some. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna let it dry, then we can give it a sanding and um, for sure another uh, another little batch of mud on there. So I gave this a couple of hours just because it was kind of deeper in a couple of spots. You can see, I don't know if you can quite make it out there, where I kind of played with it about an hour ago and it was still just a little bit soft. Um, but it's pretty good now. I actually had a fan on it just for the last few minutes just to make sure the exterior was good. And it is now time to, once again, mask up and to uh, get out the old vacuum and give this a little sanding here. Okay, and now, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a second coat of the spackling here. Trying to do a light layer. That's looking pretty good. I doubt that this will be quite enough to finish it off, but it might be close. So I'm going to leave it like that. Let it dry some more. This layer won't take nearly as long to dry simply because it was just a, a very thin layer. There were no deep divots of any sort. So I am getting fairly confident that this is getting harder to see on your end over there. Uh, but essentially I'm just going to repeat exactly what I did before. So once again, with the vacuum turn on, just nice, light sanding. A little bit more aggressively around here where there's a little bit of excess. Okay, now I think there's still just the tiniest, <clears throat> pardon me, tiniest imperfections here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this one last little coating of the spackling. Just like so. Oh, <laughs> of course I used a side that has just a little bit of a imperfection on it there. Okay, keeping it nice and tight. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this like this now and let it dry and then give it a quick sanding and it should be ready to paint. And here we are for what should be the final sand job. So again, just using the vacuum. Very gently here. This is just a 180 grit sanding block that's really worn out. <laughs> Doing a little feel check. Yeah, I think maybe just a tiny bit more up there. There, and we are ready to paint. Ready to paint. I'm just going to use this tiny little roller here. Uh, I really like this just for small jobs. Um, 
such as painting over some patching and stuff like that. I'm just going to go like so. And that's it for this coat. Oh, it looks like there's a little fuzz. <laughs> Dang it. It came off of there. No problem. Just remove it. Carry on. And I'm going to let it dry and then probably just give her another coat. I remember to turn on the lights here now that I'm doing the second coat. So let's do it. It's, it's a little bit darker right now still than the rest of the wall. But uh, even so, I'm still having a hard time kind of picking it out. So that's a really good sign, not only with the patch job, but also with the fact that the paint is matching up pretty well. Because this wall uh, was painted a few years ago, and there's lots of light in here. So it's a good thing that it hasn't uh, changed the color too much. So there we go. I'm going to let that dry up, and then we'll see if we need a third coat, but I doubt it. Well, there we go. When all is said and done, that spray foam trick worked super well. This was a really large hole in here and it took care of it no problem whatsoever. It just took a little bit of time in between those, those drying phases, being careful, slicing it off, just taking care with it. And it worked really, really well. You'd never know that there was a hole here. And there's just the slightest color difference in the paint, but it's one of those things that unless you know it's there, you probably would never notice it. And when we repaint this room, it'll be taken care of anyway. So yeah, that was the super fun world of patching a hole in the wall. Uh, it can't all be fun and games, I suppose. But yeah, I love it. If uh, you have a similar situation, um, I would give that a whirl. I think it worked really well. So until next time, keep her at 11.